Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain to you about correlation. Okay, so this one is in chapter 4. So according to your chapter 4, you will learn about two things which is correlation and regression. Okay, both correlation and regression is very important in statistics. Okay, they are related to each other. But first, we need to understand what is correlation. Okay, so the learning outcomes for our today lesson is first, I will show you okay how to plot a scatter diagram. Okay, sometimes it will be referring as scatter plot. And from the scatter diagram or scatter plot that we plot, okay, we're going to find out what is the relationship between the two variables. Is there any correlation presence or not? Alright, okay. Secondly, okay, uh, we're going to find out the spurious correlation. Okay, third one, we're going to calculate and interpret the Pearson correlation coefficient. And lastly, is for Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Okay, so both of these coefficients is to describe about um, correlation. Okay, and both of these will have its own formula. And both of these will have a different calculation method. But we can use this both parameter to identify or to evaluate the correlation between the two variables that being studied. Okay. So, first, let's learn about correlation. Okay, so what is correlation? Okay, so correlation is a statistical, statistical linear relationship between two variables. Okay, so there must be a linear relationship between the two variables being studied. So the uh, examples of variables that we can uh, determine or study is like the height and width of people. Okay, uh, for example, the, uh, the student score in mathematics versus its student score in English. Okay, and perhaps we're going to study the relationship between uh, the times taken uh, for the students to do the revision in uh, daily life. Okay, so how long does it span? Okay, how does he spend in uh, in one day for doing revision in mathematics, and what does his score in mathematics during the exam. So we can study these two relationship. Okay. So in order to identify if the two variables have correlation or not, or what kind of correlation that is present, we're going to use scatter diagram or scatter plot. Okay, so scatter diagram or scatter plot is just y axis and x axis graph. Okay, just like in this one. So this is y axis and the x axis. Okay, so the variables depends on what is given to you or what the subject is being studied. Okay, there are three types of correlation. Okay, so first one, we have positive correlation. If it's positive, okay, as you can see, the variables x and y is proportional to each other. It is directly proportional, okay, uh, which means directly proportional. That means when uh, variable x increase in size, variable y is also increase in size. And so, x increase, y also increase. So that is mean with directly proportional and that one we consider it as positive correlation. Okay, secondly, okay, we have negative correlation. Okay, so if it's a negative, okay, as you can see in the scatter diagram or scatter plot, is it have a negative gradient. Okay, if in a positive correlation, it have positive gradient. But in the negative correlation, it have negative gradient. Which means this in this one, okay, so X and Y is inversely proportional with each other. Is inversely proportional with Y. Okay, what does it mean? That means, okay, X increase, your Y decrease. Or when your X decrease, your Y increase. So that is negative correlation. And lastly, we have no correlation. Okay, no correlation means there is no relationship between variables X and variable Y that is being studied. Okay, as you can see in the picture, okay, in the diagram here, okay, the variables are plotted randomly at all direction. There is no specific relationship that we can see between these two 
variables okay so let's look at more examples of different sketch or different scatter plot or scatter diagram okay so in the first one okay all the uh, values of variable x and y fit on the line of best fit okay so that means this one we have strong positive correlation okay strong positive correlation secondly okay you still have a positive gradient uh, okay positive gradient so the both of the variables are directly proportional to each other okay but okay in this one as you can see uh, the points are not on the line of best fit it's been scattered but in the positive direction in the positive gradient so we call this one as weakly positive correlation it's still a positive correlation because it have positive gradient but it's weak okay the, it's weak positive correlation okay move on to the third uh, sketch okay third plot it is a strong negative correlation it look exactly the same with strong positive correlation where all the points lies near or close or on the line of best fit but uh, this one it is in the negative gradient okay so negative gradient so that's why it is a negative correlation and it is strong because all the points lies on the line of best fit Okay, let's move on to this fourth sketch. Okay, it have negative gradient. Okay, but now all the points does not located on the line of best fit. Okay, all the lines are scattered, but in a negative correlation position. Okay, so it's weak negative correlation. Okay, so we also have moderate negative correlation. Okay. The points are still close to the line of best fit but only a few points are located on the line of best fit. So it's moderate. Okay, and the last one is no correlation because it does not have linear relationship between the two variables. Okay. So how are we going to identify either it is a strong positive correlation or it is it moderate or is it weak is based on the calculation. Uh, which is we have two different types of calculation the first one is Pearson correlation coefficient and secondly is Spearman rank correlation coefficient okay so I have another two types of sketch which fits to no correlation okay it looks like we have correlation on that one but actually it does not okay so let's say here is the y axis okay and this is the x axis okay so the first one all the points lies like this in straight line okay but even though it lies in the straight line but this one doesn't show a linear relationship so no linear relationship okay therefore no correlation okay so another one okay another example Yes, it's y as this x as this okay and all the points lies at a constant x value but varies y value so this time too okay it gives you a straight line but a constant value so no linear relationship as well therefore no correlation okay so this is another real life examples of correlation okay for example if you want to study okay uh, the, the effect of number of hours spent during revision okay number of hours during revision and score in mathematics okay we are expecting the more hours you spend for your revision okay the higher the score of the mathematics you will score in the exam so it's a positive linear correlation and we said it's because it's directly proportional okay secondly okay during summer uh, in western countries it's very hot compared to winter compared to 
fall seasons or autumn season or spring season okay so during summer okay people tend to eat more ice cream and people tend to buy sunglasses Okay, so these two items are widely sold, uh, heavily sold during uh, summer. Okay, so it says that it have a positive linear correlation between the number of glasses or sunglasses sold with the number of ice cream sold during summer. Okay, so it's directly proportional. But, okay, as you can see in the picture on the right side, okay, with this old man. Okay, so the number of hairs that he, he have as he grows older will decrease every day. Okay, so that is an example of negative linear correlation. Okay, age of person and number of hair. Okay, so the older a man gets, the less hair that he has. So it's a negative linear correlation and inversely proportional. Okay, so how to identify either that correlation is a strong uh, weak or in, uh, media moderate okay so we have to calculate okay so before we learn how to calculate let's find out what kind of correlation is present in these three different uh, sketches okay so these th three different scatter plot okay so in the first one okay let's try to draw a line of pathway okay so i'm able to draw a linear a line okay between y and x that means this one and it have a positive gradient so positive gradient okay so that means this one is a positive linear correlation okay let's look at the second sketch okay so all of this line, okay, all of these points are scattered in one direction. Looks like a straight line, and okay, and it is having a negative gradient. So that means this is a negative linear correlation. Okay, and. On the third picture, on the third scatter diagram or scatter plot, there is no line that I can draw either a positive or a negative. So all the points are randomly scattered, are randomly distributed, are randomly sketched. So that means this one no correlation. Okay, so let's do this one examples. Okay, and to find out what is. Uh, the types of correlation that is present okay so it is a study of mathematics and economic score of 10 randomly chosen students from a school are summarized above okay so you can see in the table given okay so we have student a until j and every of these students scores in both mathematics and economy okay so uh, either uh, we can set maths to be in the variable x and economy in the variable y or vice versa okay so i'm going to label this as x or this is as y okay so first let's look at um student a so student a scores 25 and 55 for maths and economy so 25 and 55 so let's just catch the points let's okay Okay, so let's uh, we sketch the scatter diagram for all of this point between students A till students J. Okay, so I already uh, put all the points. Okay, for student A until J on my scatter on the grids given here. Okay, so I'm going to find out either this one is a positive correlation or negative correlation or no correlation at all. So we're going to connect all the points and try to draw a line of best fit okay okay so that is the best line of best fit that i can draw so my line of best fit has a positive gradient okay so positive gradient so this is my a so b at the point scattered near a straight line as you can draw a line of best fit between all the points so yes 
comment on the relationship in score between the two subjects. So it have a positive gradient. That means there are it is a positive linear correlation ship correlation okay between score in math and economy okay and d could you estimate the economic score of a student who obtained 80 marks for mathematics okay so let's find out if you have any 80 score for your mathematics in the table okay so we have 25 30 35 40 35 45 40 45 and 55 55 so there is no 80 okay in the table for math score so that means no 80 in math score in the table in the table therefore it is we cannot estimate okay it cannot be estimated okay why because it is out of range all right okay so there are two ways on how you can determine your correlation Okay, the strength or degree of your correlation Okay, so first is Pearson correlation coefficient And secondly is Pearman rank correlation coefficient Okay, what is the difference between these two? Okay, first, definitely it have a different formula Between Pearson correlation coefficient Okay, so your Pearson correlation coefficient Will have uh, this formula So R equals to S prime X Y over s prime xx multiply with s prime yy and square root of these two all right and for spearman rank correlation coefficient you will have the same uh, abbreviation which is r okay but the formula is slightly different which is one minus six sum of d square okay and and square minus one okay i will explain it in more details when we learn how to use this formula okay and it's believable that okay your pearson correlation coefficient is to study the degree of linear relationship between two variables either it have a strong linear relationship weak linear relationship or moderate or intermediate okay and for pearson correlation coefficient we are going to use a raw data and it's normally used for variables which is normally distributed okay for spearman rank correlation coefficient it is work based on the rank ordered data so from the raw data that we have we're going to rearrange it and transfer it into rank ordered data and then from there only we can use the formula here okay so this coefficient is does not based on the raw data but it's based on the data that we tabulate first and normally is being used for variables which monotonically monotonically related okay what does it mean with monotonically related that means it must have this concept okay when variable x increase variable y must increase Okay, there must be a strong linear relationship between these two. Okay, it does not work with when X increase, Y decrease. Okay, so that is Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Okay, so let's learn more about Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay, so we use scatter diagram to find out idea two variables being studied is related or it have correlation or it does not okay either positive or negative but how are we going to confirm the type of correlation that they have is by using coefficient calculation okay so the first one is pearson correlation coefficient okay so this correlation coefficient has a range value from negative one to positive one okay so negative one means it's perfect negative linear correlation if it's r equals to zero no linear correlation if r equals to positive one it is a positive linear correlation perfect 
positive linear correlation okay when we have the values between negative 1 to 0 if it's close from negative 1 to 0 that means it's a weak negative linear correlation okay when in between 0 to positive 1 so if it's close to positive 1 that means it's a strong positive correlation and in it, when it's from positive 1 close to 0 that means it has a weak positive correlation okay all right so this is the formula that you're going to use okay which is s prime x y divided by square root of product of s prime x x time s prime y y okay so this is the formula for s prime x y which is n is the number of sample used okay sum of x y multiply with sum of x multiply of y okay s prime x x n multiply with sum of x square and minus okay square of sum x okay and sum uh, s prime y y okay and multiply with sum of y square minus okay sum of y and the square of it okay so it's quite confusing but when you already know how to apply this formula it will be very easy Okay, so let's look at this example. Okay, a study is done in a garden to determine the amount of moisture per 100 grams of soil X. So your amount of moisture is X and the depth from the surface of the soil is your Y. The results are as shown in the given table. So this is the table. Calculate Pearson correlation coefficient between the content of moisture and the depth from the surface of the soil. Okay, so this is the data. Okay, so normally, okay, it's advisable for you to have another table. Okay, where you put x square, y square, and x y. Okay, so that it will be easier for you to find what is the sum of all of this. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, the square of 90 is equal to 8100. Okay, so press your calculator and try to fill up this table. Okay, so 0 and 0. Okay, so take your time. Feel, please feel free to pause the video while you are filling up the table. Okay, so we already fill up this table with all of the calculated x square, y square, and x y. So x square is just square of x. Okay, y square is exactly the same square of y, so we get y square value, and x y means the value of x multiplied with your y. Okay, so after we got all of this value, then we need to find out what is the sum. Okay, sum of this. Okay, so. Add up all the x value and I got it to be 350. Okay. X square value, the sum is 21510. 21570. Okay, sorry. And for y is 140. Okay. For y square is 3500. Okay. For your xy is 3635. So this is all the values. Okay. So next, okay, we're going to find out what is your S prime x x first. So this one, okay, so there are 10, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so your N is 8, it's not 10, it's 8. Okay, so S prime x x, the formula is N sum of x square minus, okay, sum of x square. Okay. So your n is 8, your sum of x squared is 21570 minus sum of your x is 350 and square. Okay, so if you press your calculator, you will get this one to be 50060. Okay, next, s prime yy. So again, n sum of y square minus sum of y square okay so your n is 8 so sum of your y square is 3 5 0 0 minus sum of your y and then square of this okay so we get this one to be 8 4 0 0 good next we're going to find out what is s prime x y which is 
and sum of x y minus sum of x multiply with sum of y. Okay, so n is eight. Okay, so sum of x y is three six three five. Okay, minus your x sum of it is three hundred fifty. Multiply with sum of y, which is hundred forty. Okay, so press your calculator, you will get your answers to be negative 19920. Okay, now we are ready to find out what is our uh, Pearson correlation coefficient, which is r equals to s prime xy over square root of product s prime xx multiply with s prime yy. So let's substitute it with the Calculated value Okay Which is 5060 Multiply with 8400 Okay, please include Either it's positive or negative Please include Because it will affect the final answer So we get negative 0 0.97 Okay, so that is the value that you get Okay, negative 0.97 So it's a negative Okay So that means It's a Negative Linear Correlation Okay And the value is uh, Close to Negative 1 So it's a strong Negative Linear Correlation Between uh, Depth And amount of Moisture Alright Okay So next Okay so let's find out The distance From a town center X Okay so Town center Distance is X In kilometer And the cost of a drink Y is in sand For 10 places are recorded Okay so 10 means That is your N So this is your N Okay so they already calculated for you Sum of X Sum of Y Sum of x square, sum of y square, sum of x y. So we can just use this to find out what is your Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay, so let's find out your s prime x x, which is n sum of x square minus sum of x square. Okay, so your n is ten sum of x square, which already calculated for you, which is two six seven three three. Okay, minus Sum of x which is 4, 8, 9 square Okay So this one it becomes 2, 8, 2, 0, 9 Okay Then s prime y y equals to N sum of y square Minus sum of y N square everything So 10 sum of y square is 4, 7, 0, 3, 2 Minus okay, sum of y which is 6, 7, 2 square Okay, so you get this one to be 18736 Okay, next S prime xy equals to N sum of xy Okay, minus Sum of x multiply sum of y So equals to 10 sum of xy Which is 31005 Minus sum of x 489 Multiply by sum of y Which is 672 Okay, so you got this one to be Negative 18558 Okay, then we are ready to calculate R Okay, formula Make sure you always write your formula That's how Rewriting the formula again and again Will help you to Memorize it Okay So S from XY is equivalent to Negative 18558 Divided by square root of the product of S prime xx which is 28209 Multiply with okay, S prime yy which is 18736 Okay, so your R turned out to be negative 0 0.807 Again, it's a similar to a previous example Which is, is a strong Negative Linear correlation Alright, okay So 
let's move on to Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Okay, so for you to uh, calculate Spearman rank correlation coefficient, you must follow these three simple steps. The first one, you need to arrange the data in ranking order. So arrange the variables being used in ranking order. Ranking order means from 1 until 10. Okay, so the lowest uh, values in the variable, we label it as 1. Okay, next 2, 3 and the highest one is the uh, highest number. Okay, in order. Then we have to find the difference between the two variables being studied. So it's the difference in rank. Okay, it's the difference in ranking. Okay, next we're going to calculate your R value using the formula here. Okay, so just like your Pearson uh, correlation coefficient, so the values varies from negative 1 to positive 1, which negative 1 means strong negative linear correlation. Okay, 0, no linear correlation. Positive 1, strong positive linear correlation. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, so taxi ride. Okay, a study on the cost of a taxi ride of 10 different companies from a train station to the international airport is shown in the study table. Okay, so pardon me with the typo here. Okay, calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Okay, so this is the given data. Okay, so I'm going to... It does not matter which one is the first one, okay? X or Y, we don't have to label this one as X or Y. Okay, we just need to find out and we need to arrange, okay, these both variables according to ranking order. Okay, so let's look at fare, okay? So fare is in ringgit. So we have 25, 22, 18, 16, 17, 23, 16, 20, 15, 30. Okay, so the smallest number of fare is 15. So that one considered as the number first. Ranking first. Okay, so the greater number than 15, we have 16. But we have 216 here. Okay, so that means it's going to be ranking 2 and 3, but average between these two. So 2 plus 3 divided by, we have two numbers here, so 2.5. That means for Taxi G, okay, the ranking, we label it as 2.5. And Taxi D, which have similar fair value, 16, is 2.5 as well. Okay, so it's from ranking 2, 3. Okay, next is ranking number 4. Okay, so number 4 is 17. Okay, so 4 and then 18 is 5. Okay, so next is... 20 is 6, 22 is 7, 23 is 8, okay, 25 is 9, and 30 is 10. Okay, so service ranking, okay, it already have 1 is the smallest, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, what should we do next is we need to find out the difference, okay, between the ranking. Okay, so the difference, how are we going to find out? Okay, so the difference between A, ranking A is, first one, 9 minus 6 is positive 3. Okay, next, 7 minus 2 is positive 5. Okay, next, 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay. Next, 2.5 minus 9, it becomes negative 6.5. Okay, 4 minus 4 is 0. 8 minus 3 is positive 5. Okay, 2.5 minus 7, it becomes negative 4.5. Okay, 6 minus 8, negative 2. 1 minus 10 is negative 9 and 10 minus 1 is positive 9. Okay, so next you need to square all of this D. So positive 3 square becomes 9. Positive 5 square becomes 25. 0 square becomes 0. Okay, negative 6.5 square becomes 42.25. 0 square of 5 25 okay so square of negative 4.5 becomes 20.25 20 
square of this become 4 square of this become 81 and square of this becomes 81 okay so next you need to find out the sum of d square which is 9 plus 25 plus 0 plus 42.25 plus 0 plus 25 plus 20.25 plus 4 plus 81 plus 81 so sum of the d square is equal to 287.5 okay next we can calculate our spearman rank correlation coefficient which have this formula r equals to 1 minus okay 6 sum of d square over n n square minus 1 okay so 1 minus 6 Our sum of d square is 287.5 Over So n is the numbers of taxi So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J taxi Which is equivalent to 10 numbers of taxi So 10 okay, 10 square minus 1 Okay, So your R turns out to be Negative 0.742 Okay, so it's negative, so that means it is strong, negative, linear correlation. Okay, normally, if the values lies smaller than negative 0 0.5, example, negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.3 and so on, I will label it as uh, weak negative linear correlation, okay? Okay, so let's look at this example. Okay, so this one we need to compare between uh, Pearson correlation coefficient and Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Even though both of these uh, coefficient is used to determine how degree the degree of your correlation between these two variables, but they are slightly different in the way we calculate it. Okay, so if a Pearson correlation coefficient, we don't arrange your variables in order in the ranking order okay we just need to calculate x square y square x y and then we'll find out what is your pearson correlation coefficient okay so in this one if there is any presence of outliers what does it mean with outliers that means there are data which is far away from the typical range in the set of data for example okay as you can see in this one, we have y to be 5.8, 9.9, 8.9, 13.5, okay? 48.8, 13.7, 12.2, 16.5, 16 17 23.1 .1. All the values of y lies below than 23.1 Except for this one, okay? Which is 48.8 So this value is far away from the range of y that we have here So we can consider it as an outlier And how are we going to find out if it's true This y set values is outliers If the values of r that we get for Pearson correlation coefficient is smaller uh, Way too big from the Spearman's rank correlation if there is no outliers, the data is just fine, just okay. The values between Pearson correlation coefficient and Spearman's rank correlation coefficient will about the same. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, so from the uh, x and y, we need to find out what is the values of your x square. So x square is just simply square of my 2.2, okay, which is 4.84. Okay, square of 5.8 for my y to get y square 33.64 and xy is simply 2.2 multiplied with 5.8 so it becomes 12.76 okay so square of 4.5 to fill up for your x square which is 20.25 and square of 9.9 .9 to it comes 98.61 for my y square and 4.5 multiply with 9.9 .9 to get my xy which is 44.55 Okay, please continue to calculate and fill up your table Okay, so after we already complete the table Now we need to find out what is the sum Okay, so sum of x is Equals to Okay, we add out all this value So it equals to 111.4 Okay, so your x square is 
0.3, 9.56 Okay, so for your y is 170.4 Okay, for your y square is 4239.82 And for your xy is equivalent to 2119.05 Okay, so next we're going to calculate the yeah, S prime xx Okay So, N sum of x square minus sum of x square So, your N So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 So, N equals to 10 Okay 10 multiplied with your x square Which is 1539.56 Okay, then minus okay sum of your x and square. So press your calculator, and you get your s prime x x to be two nine eight five point sixty four. Okay, next s prime y y is again n sum of y square minus sum of y square. So your n is ten. Sum of your y square is 4239.82 minus 170.4 square. Okay, so you will get it to be 13362.04. Okay, and then s prime xy is n sum of xy minus sum of x. Multiply with sum of y So equals to 10 Your sum of xy is 2119.05 uh, Minus Okay Product of x 111.4 Multiply with y The sum of y Which is 170.4 So it's equivalent to 2207.94 Okay, so next we're going to find out what is your RR is S prime XY over square root of the product between S prime XX multiplied with S prime YY. So your S prime XY is 2207.94 okay, over square root of S prime XX is 2985.64 multiply with S prime YY which is 13362.04 Okay, so you get your R value to be 0 0.35 Okay, so it's less than 0 0.5 It's a positive correlation but a weak or we can say it's moderate Okay, positive linear correlation. Okay, so the, this R value is highly affected by the presence of these outliers where your Y becomes 48.5, which is far away too big from the range of Y that we have in this table. Okay, so let's find out what will be the values of your Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for the same data. Okay. So, this one, okay, so if a Spearman's rank correlation coefficient that we need to find out in this one, okay, so you have to arrange the data in an order, in a ranking order. Okay, so let's look at the x value. So your x value, we have 2.2, 4.5, okay, then 6.8, 8.1, okay, next is 10.8. 11.8, 14.1, 15.6, 17.9, and 19.6. Among all of these values, 2.2 is the smallest. So, next 2.2, 4.5 is the next is 6.8, 8.1. Okay, so 10.8, and then 11.8 is 6. Okay, 14.1. Okay, next is 15.6. Okay, 17.9, and 19.6. Okay, so that is the ranking order for your X values. Okay, let's look at the Y values. So according to the Y values, 5.8 is the smallest one. Next is 8.9, so 2. Okay, next is 9.9, .9, is 3. Okay. Okay, the fourth one, 
we have 12.2 okay so this is the fourth okay next is 13.5 okay so it's five here next is 13.7 so ranking number six okay larger number than 13.7 okay it's 17.2 so this is 7 17.3 to be its ranking okay followed by 23.1 which is 9 and 48.8 is 10 okay what should we do next is we need to calculate the difference between the ranking okay so 1 minus 1 equals to 0 2 minus 3 becomes negative 1 3 minus 2 is positive 1 4 minus 5 negative 1 5 minus 10 negative 5 6 minus 8 is 0 7 minus 4 is 3 8 minus 7 is 1 so positive positive okay 9 minus 8 is positive 1 and 10 minus 9 is positive 1 okay then we need to square root the uh, square all of these d values so square of 0 becomes 0 square of negative 1 become 1 square of positive 1 is 1 square of negative 1 is 1 square of negative 5 is 25 okay square of 0 0 next is 9 1 1 1 okay so next we need to find out what is the sum of our d square which is 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 25 plus 0 plus 9 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 okay which is equivalent to okay so press your calculator it's turned out to be 40 okay so next we can calculate what is our r value so Spearman rank correlation coefficient have this formula r equals to 1 minus 6 sum of d square over and n square minus 1 okay so 1 minus 6 sum of d square is 40 okay over our n we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 set of data so 10 10 square minus 1 so our r is 0 0.75 okay so this one is more than 0 0.5 so it's a strong linear correlation okay so if we compare okay so our pearson correlation coefficient just now okay so let's look at the previous slide we get it to be 0 0.35 whereas our spearman rank correlation coefficient okay is equals to 0 0.75 okay both of these calculation shows that it is a positive values means both of these uh, coefficient uh, okay it turns out to be a positive linear correlation okay so both of it is a positive linear correlation Okay, but why does your Pearson correlation coefficient have a very small numbers compared to Spearman rank correlation coefficient even though we use the same data? It's because, okay, by calculating Pearson correlation coefficient, you can detect the presence of outliers. Okay, so where is your outliers in this case? This one. Okay, 14.8.8 is the outliers of the data. So, Pearson correlation coefficient detect these outliers, okay? So, this is your outliers which results in the smaller number of uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay, so the presence of outliers y equals to 48.8 causes okay Pearson correlation coefficient value to be so small. 
Okay, so small. So that's why, okay, so small. So that's why you get your PSA correlation coefficient values to be smaller, very small compared to your Spearman rank correlation coefficient due to the presence of uh, outliers. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so thank you for watching. Okay, please complete the homeworks that I will give to you in your Google Classroom. And happy holidays. See you guys in my next class. And we're going to continue with regression. Bye-bye.